So <laughs> let's try this again, Andy. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so Andy, why don't, why don't you tell me who you are and what you do? <laughs> <laughs> yes. From the top. <laughs> From the so, top. Yes. Uh, so I am Andy Reed. I am the Southeastern brand ambassador for Glen Murray Scotch. Uh, pretty much my entire job is to go all over the Southeast and talk whiskey with bars, restaurants, retail stores, and get them to understand what Glen Murray is all about. Um, I am based in Atlanta, Georgia, and I try to frequent as many events as I possibly can. Um, and I mean, I say I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, but I, I'm, I'm on the road 75% of the time. This week, I'm in North Carolina. Next week, I'll be in uh, Sarasota, Florida, Frisky Obsession. Um, after so you're that... Lot, you're seeing a lot of grass and a lot of highway. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some oranges. I occasionally see a city <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> But most of my life is spent in hotel rooms. <laughs> so, so man, that must be that must be glamorous. Really cool. Now, so that's interesting because most people's most people's dream is to travel. Although I imagine it's a slightly different kind of travel than that. But uh, so, how how long have you been an ambassador? Um, it will be a year in uh, on the twenty seventh, actually. Okay. So, well, yeah. okay. early congratulations. That's Thank pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's been a lot of fun. I will, I will say that. Um, nice. And I mean, I do love the travel. It's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, no, it, it's been a great time. I can't complain. <laughs> nice. Now, do you get to travel outside the United States still? Yes, I did get to go to Scotland uh, nice. in uh, last August, which is absolutely gorgeous. I highly recommend it. Nice. Just, I have not had the pleasure yet. So. Oh, it's fun. It, it's fun. Save yourself like more than a week because we had a week there and it just was not enough time. So okay. if you have the opportunity, you know, give yeah. yourself like tennies because your, three of them you'll be jet lagged anyway. <laughs> oh, like 10 days. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, I went to uh, London with my wife a little bit before we got married and um, nice. we were there for about a week and a half or so. And like you said, just not enough time, you know, because yeah. <laughs> it's only like about a six hour difference from where I am. So I'm up in Massachusetts and uh, right. it's, you get there and it's just like, okay, this day shot. So is the last day. All right. So very, very important thing. Yes. Um, we've got Glenn Murray, Sherry Cask here, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm dying for a dram <laughs> after oh, that whole absolutely. fiasco at the beginning yes. there. So <laughs> have you, have you poured yourself anything yet or are you? You'll, uh, have, to exclude, you'll have to excuse my very fancy hotel glassware. <laughs> um, nothing quite that's like a, a plastic right. cup. <laughs> I will, that one's for you. So. Yay. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to pour this guy out. So what I think would be fun is, mm -hmm. so um, for those of you watching, I'm going to have a review coming out on this, if not this Friday, the next Friday. Um, I already recorded it. I just need to edit it. So it just depends on <laughs> if I uh, get around to it or not. Um, so I, I, I will probably put it out this Friday either way. So I've already kind of got my own, uh, nosing and tasting, but one thing I've never done is actually done this with an ambassador. So what I think would be cool, um, <laughs> yes, I know an ambassador, um, is to kind of have you tell me what you think I should be nosing and tasting out of this to see if I'm picking up anything that I didn't get. Oh dear. Uh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and here's where I've, I've got to warn you because I am formally, uh, well, yeah, no, formally I am trained as a sommelier. Okay. And what that means is I am not supposed to tell people what they're supposed to smell. <laughs> so All right. That's what no I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I'm catching in my plastic cup. <laughs> <and> <laughs> And uh, we're gonna we're gonna see if anything sounds familiar, or you know, okay. if you get a general feeling slash essence from it. What we're gonna we're gonna make this as fun as possible because again, I'm not uh, my job is not to influence how you're tasting. My job is just to get you to drink my stuff. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so. That sounds that sounds good to me. So I did I did actually bring up my notes just so I don't look like a fool here. <laughs> So that way I can pre I should probably shouldn't have said that out loud because it would make me look much better. 
but <laughs> <laughs> all good all good so initially um, when i whiff this um i personally get immediately hints of vanilla and that's from mm-hmm. the uh extended american whiskey barrel aging mm-hmm. um there is also a bit of a spicy kind of note to it, which is really pretty traditional for any sherry cask finish. A little bit of cardamom in there. Mm-hmm. So Nutmeg. for me, for yeah. me, I uh, a couple of things I, I wrote down. So for me, I, I definitely get that vanilla as well. Um, yeah. I'm also getting a little bit of cinnamon, which could be some of that spice that you were mentioning. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, both of those are fairly typical with with the bourbon casks. So yes. Um, I also wrote down toffee, just uh, which oh, once again definitely. another another yeah. thing I, I tend to get. So, I um, although this is this is finished in sherry casks, I, I find that I'm getting a little bit more bourbon on the nose anyway. However, my I do know that my my tasting notes are a little bit more towards the sherry. Yeah, and um, that's really the the beautiful part about our entire classic range, really. Um, mm-hmm. So. In the Glen Murray Classic range, we've got beyond the Elgin Classic, we've also got a port cast, a Chardonnay cask finish, and now, of course, the Sherry cask finish. All of those spend an average of six years in used American whiskey barrels, and then they'll only spend an additional eight months in the various other casks. So while you might not get as much on the nose, mm-hmm. you'll definitely get it on the palate. The one exception to that rule being the Chardonnay cask, where it just kind of hits the face on those and the palate, which is just crazy. So I have so. a question about that Chardonnay cask because I yes. uh, I did actually try to find the whole classic range in my mm-hmm. my area at Total Wine, and I saw the I saw the cherry um, obviously, and then um, I believe it was the peat one that I saw, but I have I have yes. yet to see the champagne. Um, sorry, the Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Yeah. And uh, is that readily available? Am I just missing it somewhere? It should be. Um, now, the trick with the trick with any distribution in the United States is that the distribution varies from state to state. Now, I would mm. assume that if you're getting certain, uh, if you're getting the sherry and you're getting the peated, you should be able to get the Chardonnay. But chances are it's such an esoteric label. We are currently the only Scotch distillery doing anything with Chardonnay cask. So That's exactly why of, they wanted to try it. <laughs> right. So a lot, of, a lot of retail buyers are a little bit reluctant to pick it up just because they, they, they don't understand that people want to try it for how unusual it is. Mm-hmm. So... I would recommend going back to your total wine, requesting it because then they'll probably bring it in. Um, it's it's literally just a matter of a lot of buyers need to understand that people want to try these things. So sometimes mm-hmm. you do have to go and request, hey, no, I want this. Please bring it in. Um, you should be able to find the Chardonnay though, or they should be able to bring it in at the very least. Okay. Well, I will so. actually do exactly that. Um, so, all right, let's let's have a sip of this. Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, awesome. I, I, okay. I know. <laughs> you, yeah, I was gonna say. I know you. I know you already have been. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm sitting here very, very attentively listening to you. So, all right. So, Andy, this one's to you. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah, that's as as good as I remember it. So, uh, spoiler alert for those in the in the channel. Um, I always like to try to give the live stream people a little bit a <laughs> little bit of extra stuff. This this did get a favorable uh, review from me, and that's you know a big part of the reason I have Andy on here. I um I wanted to I wanted to promote this because I like it, as you guys you know have heard me do a few times. So I have a couple uh, quick questions just from the chat here. So yeah, of course. I, I'm guessing you can't see the chat on your on your screen. Correct? Um, I've actually got it. Uh, I've got it on my laptop. So oh, perfect. Yeah, I, I've got a dual screen thing going on right now. So. Excellent. All right. So uh, Go Habs was just asking because I haven't tried that peat, uh, the peated finish. Yes. How like where would that rate? Do you have any any information about like the um, about that? Absolutely. So the Glen Murray peated finish. Um, it's probably more accurate to say that it's very lightly peated Scotch. What we mm-hmm. do is we blend 75% of our classic single malt with 25% peated spirit that we create. 
to make a very, very lightly peated scotch. This is not for your Ardberg or your Laphroaig fans. This is for the person who wants to get into peat, but isn't quite ready for that slap in the face of smoke. Mm -hmm. um, personally, when I'm tasting it, I mean, I live in the middle of barbecue country. So <laughs> I liken it to standing next to a barbecue instead of being inside of the campfire. It's just <laughs> that really pleasant, light light easy drink peat character um i use it in penicillin cocktails all the time it's it's fantastic <laughs> now what is so, a penicillin cocktail I, I don't know that uh it's a really classic cocktail and the recipe the original recipe calls for uh two parts blended scotch uh honey ginger lemon juice and then a a uh, splash of peated scotch on top so what I've done is I've made a slightly lighter penicillin where I'll use the Glenmorey single malt, um, again, honey, ginger, lemon juice, and then I'll just drop like an ounce of our peated scotch on top of that. And it's just lovely. It's, <laughs> it doesn't sound like it would work. But it's amazing. <laughs> okay. So do you, do you tend to drink more um, cocktails or do you, do you tend to drink like, actually, so here, here's a question. How do you typically drink your whiskey? Are you on the rocks? Are you neat? Are you water? Are you some combination? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on my mood. Okay. Um, currently, I've been playing a lot with cocktails just because uh, next week with Whiskey Obsession and then in a couple of months, I'll be at Tales of the Cocktail. So I'm trying to create and promote scotch cocktails with our brand just to show people that you know scotch mm -hmm. isn't necessarily just your grandpa's winter drink next to the fire mm -hmm. where we're we're trying to be a really approachable bartender's best friend kind of scotch and that's really what we're aiming for with this classic range mm -hmm. um so a lot of the flavors i will say are on the simple side but they're clean they're classic and they're super mixable um <laughs> our port cask finish I use that in Manhattans all the time. It's great. It's amazing. Um, so currently, yes, I am. I'm drinking a lot of cocktails. <laughs> traditionally, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> traditionally, when I'm not preparing for summer or cocktail season, um, I will go for more of a neat or on the rocks kind of characteristic. Uh, it gets very hot down here. So I will generally do like our 15 year with a couple of rocks in it. Yeah. Just because that's so easy. <laughs> well, I would, I would imagine living down there and like you said, uh, hanging out at barbecues and stuff, I, I would imagine you taste quite a bit of bourbon as well. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Yes. All right. So, so although, although you're Glen Murray, and we'll get back to that, I got to know what's, what's your go-to bourbon. So you mentioned Manhattan as well. Um, but, oh, yeah. So I, I have a go-to bourbon, which you may or may not have seen on, on one of my channels or one of my live streams, if you've ever seen one. Uh, that tends to come out, and I, I happen to have it off camera here. The people in the chat know what I'm talking about. Um, but what what does it for you as far as bourbon goes? All right. So I've got a few favorites here in this category. Um, my the, my favorite American whiskey is Bell Mead bourbon. And that is because it has a super high rye content. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I mean, it is still bourbon, but it's also got like 40% rye. And the guys that run that distillery are just the sweetest human being known to existence. Um, and that distillery itself has its own super cool uh, story behind it. Um, beyond that, if I'm not drinking Bell Mead, then it, it, uh, a friend of mine recently introduced me to TX bourbon or TX whiskey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um out of texas and it literally just tastes like milk chocolate it, it's literally the milk chocolate of bourbons and it's ridiculous so <laughs> sounds pretty good i might have to get in touch with them <laughs> yeah it, it's uh <laughs> they're, they're good people um i think their instagram is at fr distilling okay uh, yeah had a great time when i was in texas it was nice. yeah <laughs> so but, yeah uh, so go, so the, the one that I was talking about, you probably just saw in the yes. chat. Booker's, the Bookers. Yes. <laughs> so, Bookers is also delicious. I, I um, cannot argue with that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty, uh, actually every, so I have this ongoing thing where as I'm doing the live stream, 
at some point somebody will super chat and throw us some money and just say drink bookers and that usually happens um <laughs> in the event that that happens tonight i will save that for the end so don't worry i'm i certainly don't want to destroy my taste buds with bookers when i'm drinking the glen Murray. <laughs> So um, much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I noticed about like the original Glen Murray, and I, I, I should probably get around to having some of the higher, uh, higher end stuff. Not, not necessarily. What was it? The tw is it 18 year? You guys have an 18 year, right? We do. We now have an 18 year. Yes. So okay. when you say original Glen Murray, are you talking about the, the 12 year that you reviewed? Okay. Yeah, so... which is probably not true. <laughs> I'm guessing by your tone <laughs> or your question. I should... So well. What had happened was <laughs> mm -hmm. we have now split the Glen Murray lineup into two separate categories. We've got a classic category, which mm -hmm. is all of our burial finishes, the peated, and now what we call the, the classic, which is just a, a, a single malt scotch with an average of six years American whiskey. It's the younger version of the 12-year. Mm -hmm. um, our 12-year, the... From the bottle that I saw in your video, that yeah. was an older version of it. We've since updated recipes, packaging. Um, so you should still expect a very similar flavor to that. But yeah, I would say that between our classic single malt and the 12-year, those are pretty good baselines of what we do with our American barrel finishing. Okay. Um, so you said the recipe maturing. changed. You said the recipe, the recipes changed of the 12, huh? That's, uh, do mean, you have any... Well, I, I don't have any detail on that. Okay. And it, it's really just, there has been, so in Glen Murray's history, uh, in all 120 years of it being a distillery, there's only been five master distillers. And our current master distiller, Graham Cool, is going through, is doing this super cool um, audit, I guess is probably the best way to put that. Okay. of all of the various um, barrels, various finishings. So there will be little tweaks here and there to the various recipes. Um, we just updated all of our packaging last year around May. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, that tube that you had was is now officially considered old. Um, okay. <laughs> we used to... <laughs> <It's a> dusty. <laughs> yeah. we, used to uh, we used to have a 16-year which can still be found in some markets, but it has since been by a 15 and an 18 year expression. Okay. And we've also got some higher end offerings like our 25 year and the uh, mastery, but those are, you know, the, those are going to be very rare on the market. So. Okay. That's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I'm excited to hear that actually. Cause I, so, um, although you saw the video that I did on the Glen Murray, I also included it with the, um, like intro to scotch. Um, so it was, it was definitely one of the ones, cause I, as you mentioned earlier, it's very approachable and it's, it's pretty yes. easy to get into. And actually so far, I mean, I've only had the one, the one finish, but I would also call this an intro to sherry or like something that would be very approachable if you want to get into what a sherry finish could taste like. So, um, I'm actually pretty, pretty excited to try the peat more than anything. Cause I, I am one of those Ardbeg guys. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but, but I feel like anybody who drinks enough whiskey eventually ends up at, you know, Isla. So <laughs> it's, it's just like drinking beer. You start off with your lagers and then eventually you graduate into the super hoppy IPAs or the super, yep. <laughs> super dark stouts. Absolutely. Like in the direction of the other or both. Um. <laughs> I was I was just at a uh, brew fest last weekend actually, and um, oh fun! <laughs> it, was, it was pretty awesome. We were there were I want to say there were probably about sixty different breweries there, um, and there were over three hundred different beers that you could try, and. I did a good job. That's always job. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tried my darndest to win. <laughs> if you can hit 50% of those and not black out, you're doing great. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think I, I, don't, I didn't keep track because that would have been involved thinking, um, <laughs> which became increasingly harder. But I, I definitely had at least like 25 different beers, probably more. Yep. Um but uh, yeah, that was a, that was a good time too. So, um, but I, I tend to lean towards the the stouts and the porters. So I guess it's not surprising that I, I go for the heavily peated or or yeah. just very fierce flavor, aggressive whiskey. flavors. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, 
so all right so for my my information so as far as the mm -hmm. finished cast outside of the the sherry which of the other classic lines would you suggest i try i mean 100 percent that sheridan cask mm -hmm. um just because it, it's so unique i call it my summertime scotch okay. um just because it is light enough where you can absolutely sit on a porch like watch the sunset or whatever Mm -hmm. Um, it's also very, I don't know, it's very whiskey friendly. There's a lot of people who say that they don't like scotch because it tastes too much like scotch. Mm -hmm. Well, there's enough wine influence in this, in the Chardonnay cast finish where you really don't get that at all. Um, it winds up, I mean, I use this in spritters all the time. I, I've had women who swear up and down that they don't like whiskey, drink this stuff, and be like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, maybe so, I'll finally turn my wife onto it then. That'd be great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the Chardonnay cask, it, it's just got this really cool buttery quality to it. And I know mm -hmm. that sounds weird, but it, it's it's absolutely delicious. Um, and so, then beyond that, our, our port cask finish is currently the most popular but it's also been in the market longest and it tastes a bit more similar to bourbon it has more of that richness more of that sweetness to it mm -hmm. so very cool i um i i have yet to find i haven't explored port enough because i've only had a couple of them and one i really liked another one i ended up buying um so i have i have two uh daughters and one's three and one's two and i bought bottles of uh, wine from the years that they were both born and oh, that's great. so i figure i mean they were pretty young and not them but the the bottles of wine when i bought them but yeah. uh so I, I i was like hey you know what maybe i'll buy uh before i decided it should be from the year that they were born i more just figured i could buy it for like when they're born and then kind of keep it right. so i bought i bought this like it was something crazy it was like a 20 or 25 year port it was like pretty expensive and mm -hmm. I I tried it because ultimately I decided I'd rather have wine instead of port. And I tried it and I didn't like it at all. Um, so I, I don't know. Maybe port's not quite my thing, but uh, I'm I don't curious. Know. Uh, well, which, which port was it? Do you do you recall? Yeah, it had a. This um, is my this is my wine nerd coming out. I'm, I'm oh, sorry, perfect. I'm gonna, no, no, that's great. I, I want to investigate into this. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember because there's. There's only a few selections at my my local place, Julio's Liquors in in Massachusetts. But um, I'm trying to remember what it was called, it had a uh, it had a coin kind of like as part of the bottle, um, similar to like the way that the the mercury coin wines do. Um, okay. Uh, but it was very similar to that, um, but port. So I, I, that's all I had to go on. I don't remember the name of it. Um, Fair. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 so, no, no. So since, um, since, since you brought up wine, though, so two, yes. two questions. Number one, yes. um, the Chardonnay. Can you tell us where the Chardonnay casks come from? Or are they, would they even be casks or would they be something different? Like uh, So they would, I mean, casks is an appropriate term. Okay. Um, and for the longest time, they have come from the Burgundy region of France. Right. Um, so think Chablis. Uh, Cote de Bone, that sort of area. Um, we have begun using some Nap Gardenay barrels just because th there's only so many barrels in the world and we got to <laughs> source them where we get them. Yep. Uh, but predominantly, whatever's currently bottled on shelves is going to be French Chardonnay cask. Okay. which is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I get so nerdy about barrels. I, I, I taught an entire master class on barrels uh, in December, <laughs> which was so much fun. <laughs> you're, you're telling me that a but, wine sommelier is nerdy about wine. <laughs> I don't believe that I in can, a, for a minute. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you about the difference between dirt and soil, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> but So here's a question for you. So... Um, this whole concept, like everybody is obsessed with, uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to say it right. Terroir. Um, the, the whole, yep. <laughs> yeah. So yes. for wine, I see that. How important do you think that is to whiskey? It's actually super important. And mm -hmm. where that entire philosophy gets lost is when you're talking the difference between malt and blended scotches, yeah. um, with blended scotches, 
terroir doesn't matter. You can have the same bottle of Johnny Walker for decades and it's not going to taste any different. Um, But it does matter when it comes to single malts because generally if you're distilling a single malt scotch, you're buying your barley from one area. You're buying your peat from one area. There is actually a huge difference between Isla peat and Highland peat. So another uh, another quick thing to note is that our, our peat scotch uses Highland peat. Okay. So it, it's a very light, which is an additional layer of lightness on all of the light, light, light that we've already got going on. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the Isla peat has more of that like briny seawater iodine kind of flavor to it. Um, so it, it's it's a bit more difficult to discern the terroir and scotch but if you have the opportunity to taste a bunch of scotches side by side Mm -hmm. you'll be amazed at how different they'll be not just in smoke content or barrel texture or whatever but just in you'll you'll be able to take uh, you'll be able to pick up various ticks of graininess um, different quantities of sweetness is it, absolutely fascinating mm-hmm. in just the dorky sense and more than <laughs> admit that. No, that's okay. It's actually good to hear that from somebody with a, an actual, you know, certification in something like this. So like the only, so do you listen to the whiskey cast by any chance by Mark Gillespie? It's I have. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I've, I've heard a couple of episodes. I haven't watched I, I need to watch more. Honestly, I will admit that. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's um, I've I've come to be, he has a very slow way of talking, which is you know he's very um news news anchor kind of guy. But it's good because yeah. I, I listen to the podcast at like one and a half two times speed, and it's like you know normal speed. So <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've been listening to these like hour long episodes in about a half hour, and mm-hmm. as I'm listening to this, I'm hearing like him interviewing all kinds of people who have new distilleries, and um, a lot of them lately have been Ireland, and everybody's talking about terroir. And uh, so please correct me if again if I'm saying that improperly. I want to. No, say- no, that's perfect. Okay, perfect. You got it. Yep. Awesome. So um, that was the, the main reason I asked. So uh, all right. I am definitely tempted to try the uh, the the peated the peated uh, Glenmurray. That sounds yes. awesome. And the fact that you said that, that the origin uh, the twelve year is slightly different. I'm probably going to go back to that one. That's um, I don't know if I so I have a, a rating system on my my thing uh, similar in a way to the way it's Scotch for Dummies, which I know you you were on that show for a little bit, um, but it, where I do kind of like a ignore it you know, try it, buy it or stock it. And the, the Glenmurray 12 actually almost, almost got to stock it in my mind because it's so, the, the price point is awesome. You know, in my area, it's about like maybe 21, $22 um, for a a bottle of the 12 year. And for what you're getting for that price, it's like incredible, (laughs) you know? So it's, I mean, I would, would, (laughs) yeah, you know, I obviously, (laughs) yeah, right. Exactly. I would 100% say stock it because even if you're not that much of a fan, yeah. If you've got friends coming over to the house, you can impress them with this lovely bottle. It's got a lovely label on it. Yeah. And you're not shelling out like fifty dollars for McAllen. Exactly. That's <laughs> so. that's a good point too. Actually, that's a that's a very good point. Um so I have an eighty year old grandmother who's a big fan of Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. So I, <laughs> I may very uh, well she definitely needs to yeah. try our Chardonnay finish then. 100%. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my hands on that. She's she's totally gonna be like, I have no interest in trying scotch and I'm gonna be like, Grandma, just take a shot. <laughs> Sniff so, it, ground. Just sniff yeah. it. I swear to God, it smells just like Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you mentioned that you went to Scotland. So, as far as yes. obviously you have a interest or an interest in whiskey as a whole, is there any? What's like your favorite world whiskey um, outside of Scotland? Uh, so, let's say you know things like Indian whiskey or Japanese whiskey or Pakistan I, or. Ooh. I mean, I. I... so i am a huge fan of the uh nika coffee whiskey from japan Mm -hmm. um beyond that i have a super soft spot for the amrut whiskeys of Mm. india uh there was a thanksgiving that i spent with my younger brother and his girlfriend and their neighbors 
who are from India came for they brought a bottle and it was just amazing. <laughs> and it went so well with turkey. It was great. Nice. Um, and then if we're talking Irish, um, I'm actually a huge fan of a smaller, much lesser known brand called Doubler. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a super clean drinking Irish whiskey. It's the less sweet Jameson. I, I prefer my drinks on drier side. So that was nailed it for me. Nice. And, and then, of course, y'all, y'all already heard my American whiskeys. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Actually, you, you gave a much better answer than I was expecting. So I've, I've had a lot of people telling me that I need to need to do the uh, review of the Amrit as well. Or Amrit, oh, whatever. it's so good. Yeah. And apparently, I, uh, they, apparently they're starting to come out with heated versions too. So I definitely need to hop on that and check that out because that's <laughs> – Oh, that sounds delicious! But <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all—it's all about just something new. I, I love it. so one of the things. I think this is partly for for me one of the reasons I don't recommend stocking too many things. Like, there's been very few bottles I've recommended stocking. Like Woodford Reserve, in my mind, is one of those. Like the distillers to like that was one that I I kind of told people that if you have that in your in your cabinet like all the time, you're probably not going to be disappointed. Um, and there there is a few other ones. So. Uh, one of the reasons it's so hard for me to recommend to stock it though is because doing this channel, like I constantly want to just have a flow of new whiskeys and stuff <laughs> I've never tried. So it's rare that right. I actually go back to something. Um, and that was partly the reason that like, you know, when when we connected and you were like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll uh, send you a bottle of the, the sherry cask. I was like, ooh, I liked Glen Murray. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> so, so. Um, the best thing right. about Glen Murray is that we have so many different options. So you can quote unquote stock us but mm-hmm. keep switching it up. It's great. <laughs> so, all right. So here's, here's a question. What's, what's like the pinnacle of Glen Murray? What's, uh, what's their big deal right now? Ooh. So as it, yeah. So like McKellen, oh, hold, on, M, hold on, hold yeah. on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta pause for a second because I, I just saw Sean Rose's uh, oh. question. Do you like Canadian whiskeys? I do. I have tried black velvet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're bringing that up on purpose. I uh, I did a big. Well, <laughs> so once upon a time, before I had this lovely job, mm-hmm. Atlanta, uh, we have a lot of train kids that kind of shuffle through the city around Thanksgiving time. So there was an afternoon that I spent with a bunch of modern day hobos sipping mm-hmm. black velvet in a local park. <laughs> and you know what? It it did the job. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's exactly what I think it's good for. I, and that's uh, what I'm gonna say on that. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually it's funny that you that it's funny that it came up um a few days ago. I was at uh I was at a liquor store. I actually this was I don't know if this is a low point in my life or if it was uh just a, a means to an end, but so I took I took a day off from work to mm-hmm. do a bunch and I filmed like five or six episodes and I found myself at a liquor store at 10 a.m. waiting for it to open so I could go in and buy a bottle of Bushmills, <laughs> the, the original Bushmills. So <laughs> it was, I, I, I was on Instagram, actually. I, I posted a thing of it and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> like, this is terrible. I actually, in order to wait for the place to open, I went next door and got a breakfast sandwich. I'm like, this, these two things should never be this close together. <laughs> you know, I got to give you credit, though. Because apparently our, um, so Glen Murray is owned by, is currently owned by a French export company. And their international director of spirits was involved with, oh wait, it's either Bushmills or Redbreast. Oh, I could be messing this up. He recommended it, so you okay. know, can't really fault that. So. Well, so there is a new bush mills called Red Bush, so that could be part of the reason you're getting the two confused. Yeah, that so, could be it. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So back to my question: what is Red. what is the pinnacle of of Glen Murray right pinnacle now? What do I what do I want to try to afford? <laughs> so really, um, if you can, you should be able to find it. I can't imagine why not. Um, I would say that currently our, our biggest, what is our biggest deal is our 18 year. Okay. And uh, it just got whiskey advocates number 
on their top 20 list for 2017. Mm-hmm. So we've, we've been getting a lot of really cool press about that. But beyond that, it's just a really cool, really affordable 18-year scotch. Um, it retails for $90. So, so $90 for an 18-year-old single malt. That's amazing. Um, beyond that, it is natural filtered. It's aged in first fill used bourbon barrels. So it's got this really nice old barrel characteristic okay and it's a slightly higher abv than everything else in our line so most of our line comes in at 40 percent or 80 proof uh the 18 year comes in 47.2 or closer to 95 proof Um, nice give or take math so (laughs) give or take math (laughs) i like that my wife is a high school math teacher i'm gonna have to remember that line so (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I was I was an art school dropout, so give or take math. Well, now now you drink for a living, and you have a legitimate reason for it. So, I, I who's winning now? <laughs> exactly. So, so all right. So you got so you got the the classic line. So you got the five finishes. Then you got the eighteen. Is there um, any like limited releases or anything higher than that? I um yes should have probably done my uh, we, homework a little bit better. But. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, we do have our 25 year. 25. Which nice. Is, hold on. I'm going to just readjust how I'm holding this sucker. Okay. So we have a 25 year, and mm-hmm. it is also a port cask finish. It spends 23 years in the American whiskey barrels and then two years in port cask. To That's pretty good. To this, yeah. yeah it, it's super, super bold tasting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's definitely got this really nice cedar characteristic to it that I really like. Um, that usually retails for between $250, $300. It's still on the super affordable side of single yeah. malt scotch. As far as um, a 25-year-old then, goes, that's not that bad, yeah. Yeah. And then we just recently came out with the Mastery. Okay. Which is... This one is actually harder to get a hold of because it is a pre-order special release kind of thing. Like we don't, we don't have any in stock in the United States at the moment. It is on, we have a thousand bottles allocated to the United States and we only get them when somebody specifically says, Hey, yes, I want to order this. And that retails for a thousand dollars. So Okay, it's but even a, still, a special order for a thousand dollars. That's that's still kind of reasonable. Still cheaper so, than McAllen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sensing really a theme cool, here. <laughs> <laughs> what's really cool about Mastery is it is a blend of five different um, vintages of Scotch, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so what they did was they hand selected five different barrels from uh, five different years uh three different distillers but there's there's whiskey in this blend that is from like 1970s 19 earlier it, it's and i'm sorry i should probably have my notes for this one because i'm not nearly as versed in the mastery all i know is it tastes really really good and it's really really <laughs> cool when you dig into the actual story and I just, i'm dropping the ball here and i will 100 percent admit that well, no, think, but think about it this way. So it, whether you know every detail about the thing or not, <laughs> every single person in the chat or watching this in the future wants to drink something that when they drink it, they say, this just tastes really, really good. You know, like I, I've had a few, few instances of that myself. And it's, it's always just been like, I don't care what necessarily this tastes like. The whole thing together. The, just the idea. Really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and rabbit in red is the yeah. Glen Murray 25 25- readily available in the states uh rabbit in the red yes it should be um depending on what state and or city you're in you might have to request it but it should be you should be able to at least order it from your local liquor store um oh no hold on so we lost, we lost your video a little bit there but um yeah i gotta I got to take out the mic and plug in the, can you still hear me? Yep. We can still hear you. We're, we're there. 
<laughs> I do like your uh, your icon. It's, it appears to be you holding some sort of a maybe pulled pork sandwich or burger or something. That, Looks uh, okay. So that is actually one of my pride and joys. That is. Hold on. Wait. Wait. Don't don't say it. It looks like American chop suey on a bulky row. It's an accidentally vegan sloppy joe. Oh, vegan boo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's what you gotta understand. I am not a vegan by any means. Mm -hmm. However, what had happened was I was living in California for a few months and I went to a farmer's market and bought just too many vegetables. Okay. And they were, and they were about to go bad. So the only choice I had was to just chop them up really, really tiny and throw them in a pot with some tomato sauce. And that happened. It was okay. Surprisingly delicious. So, you know, it's uh, it happens. It, it, <laughs> I've cre I've created odd things back when I was uh, living on my own as well. I remember just being like, it was kind of like you know, growing up you would hear like kitchen sink soup or something like you know, like not literally in the kitchen, yeah. but like just There's everything in the soup, there. right? So like I I did kind of the same thing except I made like a kitchen sink sandwich and. I'm fairly certain there was both shrimp and peanut butter. <laughs> it, was not, it was not a good combination. Um, there was a lot more to it too. Like there was, I, I overspiced it. Like, I don't even know, but I just remember taking a bite and being like, this is terrible, but I'm hungry. <laughs> so, which is odd. I don't even know where the heck I would have gotten shrimp. Cause I typically don't keep shrimp in the house. So I don't know. <laughs> All right. So while while you're, uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt again because Rabbit in the Red says that she is. Uh, say or, that again. Yeah, you're breaking uh, up. Rabbit in the. Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. You're just a little crackly. Okay. Yeah, my hand was over the speaker for a second there. Sorry. No uh, okay, so Rabbit in the Red doesn't see much Glenmore or much around uh, DC, and that's because Virginia's got some really weird liquor laws. So so sorry about that. Uh, you'll probably have better luck in like the Philadelphia region um, or Pennsylvania slash Maryland areas. Virginia is just one of those odd control states that we're, we're trying to focus on. And yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> control no, states. I mean, there's so uh, much weirdness in the United States. Like it, it's, I get it's a, a, a group of states that all have their own stuff, but like the amount of random little things that they can't agree on is, is odd to me. So um, every single state has completely different liquor laws. And even if I say that two states are... Con so for example, uh, North Carolina and Alabama are both control states. Mm -hmm. Both of them give me equally different head. Well, Alabama's a bit more of a headache, but I love them so much. Um, <laughs> so I'm only allowed to carry certain products in both North Carolina and Alabama. Okay. Two, two totally different lines of products. Um, like in North Carolina, I am only allowed to sell our Port Chardonnay, Sherry Cast Finish, and our 12-year. Those are the okay. only things I'm allowed to sell in North Carolina. That's so weird. In Alabama, I'm only allowed to sell the port cask and the 12 year. <laughs> so like you actually have to think about what you're bringing with you. That's, that's odd. So let me, let me interrupt you for one second. Did yes. you, did you like accidentally hit the no video button on oh, your phone? I might have. Hold on. I did. My bad. Okay. Is that better? Uh, yep. There you are. <laughs> All right. So, so real, <laughs> real quick, because I, I got to address the chat yes. for a minute. Yeah. Tom. <laughs> Sorry. That was really loud. Um, <laughs> him and I, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Like him, I swear that there's, there's a few people, myself included, who yeah. just show up to every single live stream that the, the whiskey tuber <laughs> community does. And, uh, there's Tom R Santa Cruz and myself, and um, Go Habs is in there. There's there's a few other people, um, <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting you, but uh, anyway, so that's just a thing that we do every time we see each other. They just yell Bill, and I yell Tom, and I yell Santa Cruz, and so and now I've started yelling Go Habs. So 
Uh, by the way, Habs, I saw that your guys uh, did. Did they end up losing the other day? I, I saw. I saw that they were getting their butts kicked. But I'm. Uh, Wait, who's the team? Who's the team? Who's the team? <laughs> hey, there's your video. All right, so your videos, your videos back and uh, much better. Yes. <laughs> So how do I get my hands on one of those kick-ass uh, Glenn Murray hoodies? <laughs> oh, I got this one from Scotland. It's uh... <laughs> what was that? you got that one? What? I got this one from Scotland. Mm. Um, we are working on. So we've only really just started spending marketing money in the United States in the past year and a half. Mm -hmm. So our current stock is fairly limited. <laughs> However, we're going to be ramping that up within the next year or two. Okay. So well, I'll keep my eyes out. <laughs> yes. If nothing else, I've probably got a polo shirt I can send you. Um, <laughs> if you want a polo shirt. <laughs> we, we can talk about it. I'm not I'm not necessarily looking looking for for swag, although I won't say no. Um <laughs> but we can, we can talk later. <laughs> I just uh, yeah, I'm 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 a, I'm a I'm a big guy. You know, I like I like to have uh big hoodies to to cover up this this uh, uh, bulk, dad bulk. body yep. here. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this super cozy sweaters come from Scotland. So. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Nice. So let's say what else we got. So she's saying we need to head to Scotland. Yeah, I think so. Hey, William, thank okay. you very much. Just um, all right. So uh, let's see. There was oh yeah. So um, let me think. There was a couple of questions I wanted to ask you. Yes. Um, but I'm trying. To, I think actually, I think we we addressed all of them. I had a a list of really dumb questions I was going to ask in case things were super awkward between you and I. But I'm <laughs> totally not. Can make things awkward. I can just start turning around. Well, so so. Uh, <laughs> are, are, <laughs> so uh, do you have any pets? Just out of curiosity. You, would you, you like to meet him? <laughs> uh, are you, oh okay. I thought you were traveling. So are you at are you at your house? I, I, no, no, no. I'm definitely traveling, but I bring my dog everywhere. Um, oh, okay. Hey, Clooney, Clooney, can you can you take a look at the camera? I don't know if you can see him that well. Hey, he's, there he is. Is it a boy my, or a girl? He is my good boy, Clooney. Um, Wait, what is his name? Clooney, like George. Uh, okay, Clooney, Clooney. Okay, nice. Yeah, he is a ten-year-old lab mix, and he comes with me. Everywhere I drive. So, uh, <laughs> well, for, congratulations for having the first animal on the whiskey dictionary. So, <laughs> and he's the best boy, even though he's totally stolen my spot. <laughs> um, all right. So, I've got to drink some bookers because that's a thing that I have to do. Uh, of course. Um, <laughs> So is there anything else that you wanted to uh, kind of put out there? Um, I mean, I, as I've said, I, I usually do bring up Glen Murray as a, a whiskey for people to try. In general, I, I, I've i said this a hundred times. I don't have things on the show that I don't personally think is worth promoting because in general, I, I don't necessarily need to promote things. You know, like I can do the channel with, with or without things, but I honestly think that Glenn Murray is like an awesome product. And that's part of the reason I wanted you to have, I wanted to have you on. In fact, you're the first ambassador I've had on the channel and that should say a lot. Um, but is there anything else that uh, Glenn Murray in particular is trying to do or anything that you'd like to say? I mean, honestly, right now, um, cocktails. And I know this may sound blasphemy to a lot of Scotch drinkers, but seriously, our entire classic range, you can take any, any classic cocktail and just throw it through a blender in there and you're going to be in a really solid spot. Um, it's got fantastic. So that's, it, it's a really traditional way of drinking it. But just stepping outside of that box for just a minute and just experimenting, you feel like Dr. Frankenstein for a second, and it's just the most delicious way to go. <laughs> it's it's so much fun. Um, I mean, that's the entire reason I'm doing these events with these cocktail portions. I, I don't want to be juicing lemons and limes for hours, but I'm going to because it's just that good. So... <laughs> <laughs> I nice. have to hunt down like 
three pounds of blood oranges for next week and I don't uh, it's gonna be worth it it's 100 gonna be worth it so nice well i will almost certainly be doing at, at the very least i'll be doing the chardonnay and the peated um i'll try to get my hands on the port uh finish i haven't seen that one yet um as i said i haven't seen the chardonnay one but i'll i'll ask um that one in particular is is interesting to me to try i'm interested to try the peat one as well because i'd like to know if there's a peated peated scotch that i could recommend people to try if they're not necessarily gonna take to something like a like a lafroig or an ardbeg um yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I will definitely try the Chardonnay one as well. So Excellent. cool. Awesome. Thank you so well, much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Andy, for being a uh, guest on my show. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, sorry for the, sorry for the technical difficulties at the beginning, but I think we got through it. So hey, we, we worked it out. It's all good. This sure. was so much fun. So. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everybody for showing up to the live stream tonight. This was great. And uh, I'll see you all on the episode on Friday. So have a good night.